Okay, welcome back everybody. This is the first video um, for the third topic, the topic being hardware to support the IGCSE computer science um, from Cambridge. We'll be covering the um, central processing unit, the CPU, the microprocessor, and we'll be looking at von Neumann architecture in general. We will also look at the logic unit, the ALU, and the control unit, and some of the registers. These are things inside of the CPU. Um, we'll look at the control bus, the address bus, and the data bus. This is part one of computer architecture. Um, we will then move on and finish this um, in video two. Okay, the topic is hardware. Um, hardware, everything that is sort of tangible, physical on your computer, from the actual base unit itself, be it a laptop or a desktop computer, the monitor, um, input devices, sensors, barcode readers, your keyboard and your mouse, of course, um, output devices, speakers, headphones, projectors, um, laser printers, inkjet printers, 3D printers, um, to the things that are actually inside of the computer, such as the computer memory, the computer storage, and then external storage um, that can be sort of added to at a later date. So that's computer hardware. We're going to focus, though, on this thing, the CPU, the brains of the computer. So here we go. The central processing unit, or the CPU as it's known, also known as a microprocessor or a processor, is central to all modern computer systems, including your tablets, such as an, I, um, an iPad, and your smartphones. CPU is very often installed as an integrated circuit on a single microchip. The CPU has the responsibility for the execution or processing of all the instructions and data in a computer application. It basically controls the input devices, the output devices, the storage, the memory, gets them all talking to each other and gets your computer doing specific jobs. It is the brains. It's the central processing. It's the brains of the computer. So let's have a little look at the history behind computers and the chap called von Neumann and von Neumann architecture. Early computers, as we can see here, sort of the turn of the 1940s, early computers were fed data while the machines were actually running. It wasn't possible to store programs or data which meant they couldn't operate without considerable human interaction. Here's some guys getting ready to feed or looking at um, the results from this great big silly-sized computer. In the mid-40s, John von Neumann developed a concept of the stored program computer. The um, stored program computer has been sort of the model for um, all computers ever since. So here we go. The von Neumann architecture has the following main features. Um, the concept of a central processing unit, okay, the CPU was able to access the memory directly. The computer memory could store programs as well as data, and stored programs were made up of instructions which could be executed in a sequential order, a program basically. So what is inside the CPU? Obviously it's the brains of the computer, it's a central processing unit, but what's inside it? Well, it's made up of sort of three distinct areas. Okay, we've got first of all the control unit, then we've got the ALU, the arithmetic and logic unit, and then we've got a series of registers. Okay, also, and you'll be familiar with this, there is a, a system clock. Okay, um, this basically controls everything. It's like a like a like a timer which synchronizes um, all the components. It keeps them in time. Okay, without this, um, the computer would simply not work. Frequency of the pulses is known as the clock speed. Clock speed is measured in hertz. The higher the frequency, the more instructions can be performed in any one given moment. In the 1980s, a little bit of history again, uh, processors commonly ran at a rate of between 3 megahertz or, um, to 5 megahertz. 3 million to 5 million pulses or cycles per second. Now, in today's processors, um, these commonly run at anything between um, 3 gigahertz. Um, to 5 gigahertz, which is like 5 million to 5 billion pulses or cycles per second. So you can see there's quite a jump from the 1980s to present day, sort of 40 years on. I just want to talk a little bit about what the computer's doing in terms of um, where it's getting its information from. 
So the, the CPU takes data from programs held on the hard disk, this thing here, and puts them into the RAM temporarily. So I want to run something from Microsoft Word. So I'm going to find the um, program that I've been working on on the, on the hard disk. I'm going to load it into the RAM so I can work on it. This is done because read-write operations carried out using the RAM are considerably faster than read-write operations um, to the um, to the hard disk to the backing store. Um, consequently, any key data needed by an application will be stored temporarily in RAM to considerably speed up the operations. So let's have a little talk about each of these um, each of these things. Starting with the control unit, the control unit reads an instruction from memory. The address of the, of the location where the instruction can be found is stored in the um, PC. Yeah, the program counter register. This instruction is then interpreted using the fetch, decode, execute cycle, which we'll be covering in the second video. During that process, sing, um, signals are generated along the control bus to tell the other components in the computer what to do. The control unit ensures synchronization of data flow and program instructions throughout the computer, controlling everything, the control unit. The next thing is the arithmetic and logic unit. As the name sort of suggests, this is used for mathematical calculations. It allows the required arithmetic or logic, basically pluses and minuses and shifting for multiplication and division, um, and the AND and the OR, basically the gate operations, to be carried out whilst a program is being run. It is possible for a computer to have more than one ALU to carry out specific functions. As I just said, multiplication and division are carried out by a sequence of addition, subtraction, and left or right shifts. We have covered this in chapter one. Okay, please refer to one of those videos if you want to talk a little bit more or see a little bit more about shifting. Okay, up and down registers. Um, and finally, the registers, we've got the MAR the memory address register, the MDR, the um, and finally registers. We've got these four registers here which we'll talk about a little bit later but these um, small amounts of high-speed memory and these are contained again within the CPU. They're used by the processor to store small amounts of data that are needed during processing such as the address of the next instruction to be executed, the current instruction being decoded, and the results of um, calculations. Okay, and here's a little bit more of a breakdown of what these things do. So we have the current instruction register, the CIR. We've got the accumulator, the ACC, the memory address register, MAR, memory data or the buffer register, the MDR, and the program counter. And you can see what all of these do here. Okay, moving on. How does the CPU talk to the memory and how does it talk to the input and output devices? Well, we use a thing called a series of things called buses. Three main types of buses, the control bus, the address bus, and the data bus. So, but what do they do? Well, the address bus carries memory addresses from the processor to other components such as primary uh, memory and input and output devices. The control bus carries control signals from the processors to other components. The control bus also carries the clock's pulses. And finally the data bus, this carries the actual data between the processor and other components. Okay, so those three buses are carrying data, carrying information between the memory CPU and the input and output, or rather the ports to the input and output devices. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about memory, about where things live on in memory. Basically memory is made up of two partitions, the address where something lives and the content, basically the, the information or the data. So we've got the data and where it lives. Each partition consists of an address and its contents. The table shown uses 8 bits for each address, okay, 8 bits, and 8 bits for the content. In a real computer, of course, the address and its contents are actually much, much larger than this. 
the address will uniquely identify every location in the memory and the contents where um, will be the binary values stored in each location okay so let's talk about how information is retrieved and used from RAM um, in accordance with this, the registers on this on the um, on CPU so two examples the um, of how the MAR and the MDR registers can be used when carrying out a read and write operation um, to and from the memory. First, consider the read operation. Well, we will. Here we go. We've got we've got a little address and content on the on the memory here from the RAM. Okay. Suppose we want to read the contents of the memory location. Yeah. The two registers are used as follows. Well, let's have a little look. First of all, the address. Of location one 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 zero 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 one to be read from a list written into the M MAR. So it writes this address into the MAR. A read signal is sent to the computer's memory. The contents of this memory or location are then put into the MDR. What is stored in this? Well, it's this data here. So two registers: the data and the address. Okay, now let's consider the write operation. Again, we will use memory section shown in this table here, this particular section here, the one in orange. Um, the data to be stored is first written into the MDR, the memory data register. Okay, as you can see here, we've put the data from here and we've put it into the MDR. So the content and the address on the on RAM, yeah, on RAM memory, We've written it to the MDR on the CPU. This data is to be written into a location address here. So this is, this address is now written into the MAR. Okay, so we've put the address into the MAR. Finally, a write signal is sent to the computer memory and the value, yep, this one here, will then be written into the correct memory location. So that is it for memory. Um, that is um, basically RAM talking to the two registers, the MDR and the MAR on the CPU. That is it for this first lesson. As I said before, we will move on to the fetch, decode and execute cycle and finish off this, um, this first part, computer architecture. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, and I will see you very, very soon. Thank you very much indeed.